For something to be called epic, it needs to be innovative, ambitious, unprecedented. In poker, this new league, featuring only the best players in the world, is indeed epic. This is the future of poker. Well, this is the first time that poker has taken that step. It's something that will really set the players that do well apart. First champion. This is where the best get put to the test. Epic poker main event. There's no chance you could find a tougher tournament anywhere in the world. It's just sick. This is how the game is supposed to be played. This is a perfect way to take the competition to the next level. If you want to consider yourself one of the best players in the world, you have to be playing in this league. This is our league. This is our league. This is our league. Now we got a game. We're all afraid of each other. You're really playing the best of the best. I'm humbled and honored to be just a part of it. Wow! This, 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 this is epic, 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 epic post. Thirty-seven of the game's greatest players came to the Palms Casino Resort for the inaugural event of the Epic Poker League, and now just three tables are left in this six-max event. And hi again, everybody. I'm Pat O'Brien. Welcome to the dawn of a new era in professional poker, a league designed for the world's best players. And in every sport, there's that one guy. He's read the book, he's seen the movie, he's played it, he knows the players, and that is Ali Najat. Hi, Ali. Excited to be here, Pat. Our 137 are now down to an amazing field of 18 just over our shoulder. They're going to be playing down to six players for that coveted final table. Well, it is the best against the best, competing for high stakes and prestige. And when you look out here, what do you see? I see an all-star field where you could literally right now pick any six players and have one of the best final tables in recent memory. Pat, this is what the poker world has been waiting for. And I see a virtual who's who of professional poker. They are here, and the high level of play has been apparent from the start. The road to the final table began when an elite field came to the Palms Casino Resort for the first ever Epic Poker League event. This revolutionary league is designed to give top pros the opportunity to compete with the best of the best, the poker's most exclusive title. Each player earned a 5-3 or 2-year card based on a new system that combines major tournament caches, major poker titles, and adjusted lifetime earnings. What's the part of this? Among the inaugural field were seven of the top ten players as ranked by the Global Poker Index, GPI an innovative way to, for the first time ever, definitively rank the game's best. Morning. <laughs> On day one, greatness could be found everywhere as top young pros and former main event champions came to play, including all-time bracelet leader Phil Helmuth, who took his seat at a stack table. What's up, boys? But the man they call the poker brat quietly hit the rails. Wow. Pretty upset that I got eliminated today. I just felt like maybe I let my ego get in the way a little bit. Eugene Kachalov survived that table and ended the day as chip leader. Day two saw some incredible names atop the leaderboard, including 2011 November Niner Ben Lamb. As the field of 63 was whittled down, Lamb couldn't hold on, falling just short of the money. And with 18 players left, Sam Trickett was the dominant chip leader. Tonight, Trickett brings his big stack to the feature table where he is sitting alongside the number two ranked player in the world, Eric Seidel. You see the GPI rank right there on the left. Number three ranked, Jason Mercier, and the number four player in the world, Eugene Kachalov. And the outer two tables are just as tough with gifted players like 1996 world champion Huck Seed, one of the young phenoms of the game, Adam Levy, and the always dangerous but fun-loving Gavin the Caveman Smith. <laughs> Well, Ali, everybody's eager to get started, so to kick things off from the hardwood, here is the commissioner of the Epic Poker League, Annie Duke. Welcome, everybody. I can't wait to watch the poker today, so I don't want to keep you waiting any longer. Shuffle up and deal. So as we pick up the action, let's see how the top ten stack up, Ali. Quite a few household names up there, looking for one of six seats at our final table. Under the chip average or par is Gavin Smith. In front of him, you got Eugene Kachalov. In sixth, Jason Mercier. 
And Eric Seidel is chasing the chip leader, Sam Trickett. Well, there's a chip leader, Trickett, and what a tough table this is. Seidel, Mercier, Kachaloff, Justin Bonomo, and Hassan Abib. Wow. I can't take it, take it. Oh, yeah, as if the lineup's not enough of a nightmare, Seidel's got to listen to Jason singing. L listen to Justin Bieber on the way here. I call. That's got to be Brittany in the iPod. Blinds are three and six thousand with a one K ante. First to act is Justin Bonomo. Bonomo raises to thirteen thousand under the gun. UTG, you see that indicated to the left of his cards. Couple of sevens for Justin. Certainly worthy of a raise pre-flop. Fourth rank Kachalov folds King Nine. Action to chip leader Sam Trickett. He folds. Over to third rank Jason Mercier. Don't expect a call from Jason in this spot. He's one of the more aggressive players in the game today. 24-year-old pro from Florida raises to 37,000. Action back on Bonomo is indicated by the green light next to his name. Bonomo's got a little over 185,000 behind. That represents about 32 big blinds. You see the stack sizes. I'm all in. Bonomo moves all in and a quick call from Mercier. Jason's certainly not going to lay that hand down, and he's got enough chips to make this call, but he's behind heading to the flop. You see the percentages? And look at the top of the screen. Mercier has five outs to knock out Bonomo. Now, normally that would be six outs, except Eugene Kachalov mucked a king pre-flop. There it is, Jack, eight, deuce, two clubs. Bonomo's safe for now. The hard part's done. Now you just want to hang on. Turn card hits a king. Mercier turns the tables on Bonomo, who now needs a seven to stay alive. You see the look of disappointment on Justin's face. River's a 10. You see Mercier's winning cards highlighted. Justin got it in good. Unfortunately, the deck didn't cooperate. He'll pick up a little over 43 grand for an 18th place finish. Redraw now. Seidel looking to get away from Kachaloff, and of course, Mercier. Those three playing for the million dollars, the Epic Poker Champions Ring, and the number one ranking on the Global Poker Index GPI which is a ranking of the top 300 live tournament players in the world based on their cash finishes in qualifying tournaments over the past 36 months. And the number one ranked player, Frenchman Bertrand Grospellier, was not at this event, but seven of the top 10 that you see were here for the inaugural. How cool is that? On a table two, the unranked 96 world champion, Huck Seed, sits at another stacked table. Yeah, he's there with Ted Lawson, Matt Glantz, Gavin Smith, and 130th ranked David Chino Ream. Oh, yeah, Chino. That's Noah Schwartz letting Chino know it's his turn to act with a kiss. Poker players always so affectionate, aren't they? It's Vegas. Under the gun, Chino raises with pocket jacks to 14,000. Oh, Noah gives him a little affection, re-raising to 37,000 with ace king. 93, I'll show you. It's a love fest. Chino re-raises to 81,000. Tough love. Noah's got a little over 200,000 behind. Oh, Schwartz folds. Shows the ace king. She got to show everybody now. And he's going to get a look at Chino's hand. Show one, show all is the policy. And Noah's going to feel a little bit better about that. He's still got plenty to play with, but I'm surprised to see him fold against a player as aggressive as Chino. Over to table three where two epic pro-am qualifiers sit. Dan Fleischman finished seventh to claim his seat here. He's watching on as pro-am runner-up Brandon Myers is in a bit of a spot. After the flop, Myers is fired with just an ace high against Californian pro Hafiz Khan, who has top pair and makes the call. Myers obviously knows how to play a lick, qualifying in our pro-am for $1,500, winning his seat into this event, making the most of it so far. Turn card four. Khan still leads, and he checked. Well, Brandon's not bashful. He reaches for 27000 and fires a second barrel into this pot with a naked ace high. Khan makes the call. Yeah, not going anywhere with top pair, controlling the size of the pot. Rivers an ace. Brandon Myers with a check mark. He can't lose a hand unless he folds. Khan checks. Check. Check, check. Well, Brandon finally makes the best hand and then knuckles down in position. Khan not happy. Qualifier caught the river, and Brandon Myers chips up to 264,000. Don't ever run bad, Junior. Back to our feature table where you see the number two and three ranked players in the world. Still joined by the fourth rank, Eugene Kachalov. Eugene Kachalov. 
His last name scared me, Catch a Lot. Catch a Lot? Yeah. <laughs> Plenty of nicknames at our table Tricky Tricket, No Mercy Mercier, and the Cyborg, Eric Seidel. Mercier raises from under the gun, plus one, making it 12,000. You see the little plus one next to Mercier's graphic there? Seidel folds his jack three. That'll be one of the easier laydowns on the day for Eric. Eugene Kachaloff will call from the big blind with two red deuces. So the third and fourth ranked players will see a flop, two fours and a nine. Kachaloff with two pair. He's gonna check the best hand over to Jason. And as expected, one of the most aggressive players here will fire a barrel, 11,000. Kachalov correctly calls, controlling the size of the pot. No need to check raise and be a hero. Turn card another four. Kachalov with a full house now. He's going to check a second time. And if I know Jason Mercier, he's not going to be taking his foot off the gas pedal. And sure enough, he fires 28,000. That's the second barrel into this pot. Kachalov is not a believer. River card of seven. Kachalov with a check mark. Third check from Eugene. And this is where the men and the boys are separated on the felt, Pat. Jason Mercier is reaching deep, and he's going to fire a third barrel bluff in the amount of 67,000. And now Kachalov has got to play the guessing game. Does he believe the story Jason Mercier is telling or not? It's going to cost him a quarter of his remaining stack to find out. Kachalov lays down a full house. Not just a full house, but the best hand. Mercier, with his eye on the championship and the number one ranking in the world, making it look easy at the inaugural Epic Poker main event. Experience Epic Poker. Now you can play like a pro, free. Welcome back to the Palms Casino Resort, where table three is apparently not the place to be. As two players have been eliminated, the first, Hoyt Corkin's ace-queen couldn't overcome the ace-king of Adam Levy. Sure. Yeah. Then Brandon Myers finished the job when Hafiz Khan shoved with ace four, and the nervous Pro-Am qualifier saw his pocket eights hold up. While the Epic Poker League is designed for top pros to play against each other, the Pro-Ams give everyone who loves poker a chance to play and win a seat in the main event, just like Brandon Myers, who's doing so well. If you want to play in one of the Pro-Am qualifiers, just go to epicpoker.com to find out how. I just want to play bigger, you know? <laughs> It's time, it's time we kick it up. Only one player at the table can possibly play bigger than Jason, and that's Eric Seidel. As action continues, 15 players remain. Top prize here, a million dollars. The chip leader, Sam Trickett, passes on Queen 4 off suit. Mercier folds as well. Action to Eric Seidel, who looks down at King 3 off suit. And more importantly, Patty looks down at the button, which, of course, after everyone is folded in front of you, is exactly where you want to be. It doesn't even matter if you dealt the man napkins he's probably going to raise. Seidel raises from the button. Makes it 14,000. Hassan Habib flat calling from the small blind with ace nine off suit. Kachaloff calls, so three to the flop. And it's jack 10, queen, two spades, straight draws for everybody. You see the player's hands have reordered. The player who acts first after the flop is now on top. And that player is Hassan Habib, who checked along with Eugene Kachalov, allowing Seidel to fire 22,000 at the flop. Now, by smooth calling before the flop, Hassan allowed Eugene in from the big blind, making his job that much more difficult, playing against two opponents as opposed to one. Now he's called Eric. Eugene is checked out. Turn card is a three. That pairs Seidel. Once out of position, always out of position for Hassan when you're up against the button. 
And he's checked it over to Eric. Eric is gonna slow down by checking behind. And the river card brings another three. Trip threes for Seidel gives him the check mark. He can only lose if he folds. It also puts a third spade up on the board, completing the flush draw, which might cause your average player to think twice, but not Eric Seidel. After Hassan checks over to him, he's gonna put a value bet out there. 60,000. It's about two thirds of the pot. And only 8% of Hassan's remaining chips to call. He's asking himself, what type of hand would Eric raise the button, fire the flop, and check the turn with? And he's going to find out. Wow, Habib makes the call with just ace high. He was good before the flop and on the flop. But it was all downhill from there. He caught running threes at lucky best. Seidel has run good and played great through a long career. Now he's in the midst of his greatest single year, a year that almost wasn't. Towards the end of the last year, I was, certainly was thinking about uh, retiring. It wasn't so much that I was having a bad streak. It was just a matter of looking at the environment now and seeing that all of these kids have gotten so, so good. It's definitely becoming harder and harder to make a living doing this. But I'm happy that I continued at least for this year. Just, you know, everything has been going right this year. I think I did make a fair amount of adjustments against the younger players. I started to play a lot more events and, and it became a lot more fun. <laughs> My goal at the beginning of every year is to cash for a million dollars. If I get to a million, then it becomes two million. And this year, January started off so well, I decided my big goal was to have the best year anybody's ever had. And I got there, 5.6 million. I'm just trying to play my best, and it just seems as if this year I'm making the right decisions and I'm getting breaks at the right time. I don't expect it to ever happen again, so I'm trying to enjoy it while it's here. Well, not too hard to enjoy $5.6 million outside of the World Series of Poker main event final table. That's as sick as it gets in a year. Meantime, table three claimed another victim, Dan Fleischman. Over at table two, Matt Glantz is sitting pretty. He's flopped a set of eights, and Chino Ream has bet 49000 with just ace high. Action is on Glantz. Glantz raises to 117000 and not just any ace high for Chino. He's got the Broadway draw. A 10 would give him the ace high straight. He's also got a backdoor flush draw. Cost Chino 14% of his stack to call. Chino makes the call. That puts the pot up to almost 300,000. Turn card, nine of hearts. Four to a straight on board now. That's not Matt Glance's favorite. Chino bets 100 grand. Leading right into Matt's set of eights. Representing the straight, Matt not buying it. Glance just calls to the river. Almost half a million in the pot. Look at that. Ten of spades on the end. Five cards straight on the board. Glance is set. Completely irrelevant at this point. Chino has made the nuts, and he's going to put Glance all in. Glance calls, and he's out. Medic to the outer table. We got a sick one. That hard. River was a 10. You can't blame Matt for calling. When Chino let out on the turn, he was representing a 10. And Matt figured he was just going to yeah, be chopping yeah. on the river. Lucky, buddy. We all know that. So a disappointed Matt Glance will take home 43,000, and Chino will take on all his chips and become the chip leader in the process. Chino Ream now leads the charge as the battle for the final six seats in this inaugural Epic Poker main event. Rolls on. Experience Epic Poker. Now you can play like a pro, free. While the field is thinning at the Palms Casino Resort, 
Brandon Myers is the only qualifier left after Dan Fleischman was knocked out by Gavin Smith. Shortly thereafter, we saw Chino Ream take the chip lead, brutally busting Matt Glantz in 14. Well, nuts. Well, first inaugural epic main event just busted, so pretty bummed right now. Pretty nasty beat, lost to a four outer. Chino and me will still be friends. Chino then went on to knock out Noah Schwartz in 13th, getting the field down to 12. The players have redrawn to the final two tables. Chino Ream, the only player over one million in chips, leads the way, followed by Sam Trickett and Hassan Habib, who's been doing well so far. Seidel and Mercier round off the top six. As for the bottom six, you see Brandon Myers and Gavin Smith nearing the danger zone, while Eugene Kachalov needs to get it in gear if he wants one of those six seats at the final table. The game within the game continues as three of our top five in the GPI are still here. Seidel, Mercier, and Kachalov trying to grab the top spot, joined by Adam Ruthless Levy and Fedora Warren, Gavin Smith. Maybe you can buy a new phone if you make the final table. And screen destroying Gavin Smith. I don't like this phone. <laughs> ah, get that thing fixed, buddy. Ugh. Rounding out the six max table is 24 year old Isaac Barron. Not just any 24 year old, a Celtics fan who's won over two million in his career. Action folded around his side down on the button. He looked down at pocket deuces and raised to 20K. Over to Jason Mercier in the small blind. He has King Jack off suit, makes the call. Isaac Barron with a King 10 off suit calls from the big blind. Blinds have gone up to four and 8,000 with a 1K ante. Three players to the flop, Queen 9, 5, Rainbow. Queen high board, rainbow, Mercier flops the gut shot straight draw. He's knuckled it over to Isaac, who's got a gut shot straight draw himself. Baron bets 35,000. 35, Just a semi bluff, looking to lead out into the pre flop raiser, who was Eric Seidel from late position, a wide range for him. And he's gotten through Eric, but not through Jason. Mercier check raises, making it 88,000. That's a strong play from Jason, checking into two players behind him and then raising. And Isaac's going to lay it down. Jason, of course, with nothing but king high, didn't imagine Isaac had much of a hand after leading into the razor on such a dry board. Mercier again wins with nothing. And while he was playing that hand with the widely known Seidel, he got the lesser known Baron to fold. But as Jason told us, he knows how all these guys play. You know, there's something to be said for knowing how each person's going to play at the table. Uh, I've played against half the people that played this tournament already, probably more, um, and could name almost every single person at every table from the start of the tournament. So, uh, you know, you have a little more information on the players, and sometimes you can use that to your advantage. Over to table two, we see the known quantity, Huck Seed, now sitting next to the unknown quantity a Pro Am qualifier, Brandon Myers. They are watching as Chino Ream is in a hand against Sam Trickett and Hassan Habib. Well, Chino Reem did Matt Glantz dirty just a short time ago. We don't have any hole card information right now, so it's up to us to play the guessing game. Reem is knuckled over to Hassan. Three clubs on the board, jack high. 192,000 in the pot, and Hassan is gonna fire 70,000. That's a very small bet. And Trickett makes the call, pot over 330,000. Yeah, this is a big one. And with Chino's call, it's going to be up to over 400 grand. River is a deuce, pairs the board. Pretty safe card. Not likely that anybody has a deuce in their hand. And here we go. Chino's betting out. 150,000. Habib just calls. Pot size over 700,000. Whoever wins this will be the chip leader. Easier to call than to overcall. Sam Trickett out of the way. Habib gets a look at Chino's flush. Reem wins his huge pot, and he's now over 1.5 million. I cannot raise when they both call. And the start of the day, chip leader Sam Trickett is down on the day, unable to get anything going. Can't say the same for Chino, however, up to over one and a half million and winning two out of every three showdowns he gets to. At the start of the tournament, Chino was ranked 130th on the GPI, biggest year 2008. He won the WPT Doyle Brunson Classic, finished seventh at the main event. 
Ali, in his career, $4.7 million. And Patty certainly doesn't have that money anymore. He's talked very publicly about having gone broke and is currently in some pretty big debt. Meantime, back at the feature table, Eugene Kachaloff is all in and way behind Adam Levy. Way behind is right. Two fives, not what you want to be hanging on to up against a couple of cowboys. He's a four-to-one dog heading to the flop in an over half a million chip pot. Both Eric Seidel and Jason Mercy are looking on with some interest, the other top-ranked players at this table. You're gonna have to catch a lot here. <laughs> Adam raised under the gun, plus one. Kachalov moved all in from the big blind, and of course, Levy snap called. Here's the flop, nine, five, four, set for Kachalov. Yikes. He caught a lot. Turn card seven. Levy's gone from needing to dodge a two-outer to needing to hit a two-outer. River pairs the board. Eugene Kachaloff stays alive in the full house. Adam Levy down under 450,000 after losing 37% of his stack. And Kachaloff now at his high point for the day, nearly 520 grand. I feel like they like Eugene more than Eric. They like me? No, nobody likes you. Oh, they like Eugene more than Eric. Eugene is a likeable, likeable guy, yeah. Very likeable. Eugene hoping that nice guys can finish first. He's still in contention for the number one ranking and the first ever Epic Poker main event title. Experience epic poker. Now you can play like a pro, free. Welcome back to the Palms Casino Resort as we check out the top six in chips. Chino Reem remains atop the board, but the big movers are Hassan Habib, who has just surged up over a million, and of course, Eugene Kachaloff, who had that miracle double up. Yeah, we saw him on the brink, but Ukrainian-born Kachalov has been in tougher spots before. When I left Ukraine, I was 10 years old. We were leaving exactly uh, as the Soviet Union was breaking apart. There were tanks uh, surrounding the city. No one knew what, what was going on. We didn't, we didn't know if there was going to be violence, and even when we got into the plane, we still didn't know if we were going to take off. At the time, it certainly seemed like I couldn't have a future in a country like that. And America seems like a place where like dreams come true and you can really make something of yourself. When we landed, we had like no money to our names. I think my mom sold everything we had in Russia and it was like 60 bucks or something. Basically, you know, not enough for anything. It was a difficult transition when I first moved here, again, because I, I had like no language skills at all. I remember I was getting into a lot of fights, like we would get picked on a lot, stuff like that. But then, as I grew older, that kind of went away. I did pretty well in high school and got my uh, bachelor's degree, although I haven't put, put it to use ever since, so. <laughs> yeah, poker's been really good to me. What more can you ask for than enjoy your job? I really couldn't be happier. I, I hope I can keep this going. Certainly helps to put things into perspective when you've been through as much adversity as Eugene Kachalov has. No doubt he appreciates every moment of this good life. Well, everybody in this league has a unique story, so to find out more about all the players, log on to EpicPoker.com. Action continues at our feature table. Chip average, par, 623,000. Action two, Jason Mercier, who looks down at pocket sevens from under the gun and raises to 16,000. And that's a min raise with the blinds at 4 and 8K. Baron calls from UTG plus one. He's got King Jack suited, certainly a playable hand, but by smooth calling, he's going to invite other players behind him to enter the pot as well. Kachaloff folded. Gavin Smith on the button with Queen Jack off suit. He calls. Seidel in the big blind calls with his ace nine suited. Four players to the flop. And it comes, deuce, king, seven. King high board with a couple of diamonds. Mercier's got middle set. He's way out in front. The bad news for Isaac Barron is he's flopped top pair. Seidel checks. Oh. 
Jason's going to bet 27,000. No reason for him to slow play. There is a flush draw on board, and he's got three different opponents behind him. Baron called. Smith and Seidel both get out of the way. Now Jason's bet was unusually small. Just about a quarter of the pot. Turn is a ten of diamonds. That completes the flush draw. Clearly not Jason's favorite card in the deck, but he can't simply check and let Isaac check behind him and possibly have a fourth diamond roll off on the turn. He's got to make a play at the pot right now. Mercier bets nearly half the pot, 63,000. More conventionally sized bet at this point. Tough spot for Isaac Barron. He doesn't have a diamond in his hand. He certainly doesn't have the best kicker. And that's a very disciplined fold from a young poker player. But how about Jason Mercier? He is voluntarily playing 30% of the first 66 hands. That's right about average. But his post-flop aggression index of 14 is off the charts. Average players at about 1.5. Back at table two, Chino Ream just took out Ted Lawson in 12th place. He just folded the Huck C to win all in with top pair and a king kicker. Action on Sam Trickett, who also has top pair, but with a worse kicker. 60,000 for Sam to call. He's got 300,000 in front of him, and he's going to look Huck up. Trickett makes the call, and Huck Seed is at risk. He's got the best hand right now. He's got Sam out kicked. Turn card is a jack of clubs. Trickett has two pair. Sam now has the best hand, but Huck has an open ended straight flush draw, 18 outs. His flush outs are the first line, his straight outs are the second line, and his pair outs are the third up in the graphic. 50 50. Yeah. River is a club, and Huxie survives with a flush. A bad day just got worse for Sam Trickett, who is now the short stack with 249,000. Huck Seed stays alive and now has 34 big blinds. Back at the feature table, Adam Levy just took a pot off Gavin Smith. I, I was able to lay down the clean there. <laughs> I haven't always been able to do that. I'm very impressed with your restraint. Yeah, just ask myself, what would Eric Seidel do? W-W-E-S-D? That's not what Seidel would do. I know, because it would be stupid. I smell bumper sticker. Get two, partner. Seidel above par and chips is action <laughs> folding over to Gavin wow. Smith. Who raises from the button to 18,000 with 8-7 off suit. It's not the 8-7, but rather the button that's got Gavin feeling frisky. I didn't know how to factor in this now. What would Seidel do? And now I'm playing against Seidel. That's going to screw me over. Eric just calling from the blinds with the suited ace. Heads up to the flop. 9-7-5. Smith with a pair of sevens. He's jumped out into the lead. Seidel has checked it over to him with the gut shot straight draw. Smith also with a gut shot straight draw to go with his pair. Fires 22,000. And Seidel will just make the call. Pot up to 90,000 now. Turn card in eight. What a card that gives Seidel a straight and Gavin two pair. As Gavin would describe it, that's a pesky card. He's improved his hand, but now there's four to a straight on board. And he knows Seidel may have a six in his hand. And that's why he's going to check behind Eric after having it checked to him. King on the river gives Seidel the hammerlock on the hand. That was a really disciplined check by Gavin on the turn. Controlled the size of the pot. Now allows Eric to bluff possibly. And puts Gavin in a spot where he can call a much smaller bet. Seidel bets 55,000. More than half the pot. Gavin just calls. Seidel shows the straight. And wins the pot. Did you notice that the applause was considerably less for when you won the pot as opposed to when Eugene did? People may be getting sick of you winning. <laughs> there must be a lot of ill people in the poker world because all Eric Seidel seems to do is win. Experience Epic Poker. Now you can play like a pro, free.
Welcome back to the Palms Casino Resort and the epic Six Max main event. At table two, qualifier Brandon Myers has just pushed all in versus the chip leader, Chino Reed. I really wish I just called you pre-flop. Myers made it 18,000 on the button. Chino three bet from the small blind to 50, and now Myers has four bet all in for his last 247. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, I don't wanna W up. Just 15% of Chino's remaining stack. If he wants to call, he is the chip leader. Oh. Chino lays it down. What'd you have, ace queen? Ace king. Ace king. I oh, feel man. very, very good. What, right king queen now. or something? Yes. <laughs> I feel so very good. Queen, man. All right, Chino's good, but how about Myers? The pro am qualifier is in position to win this first major tournament for the three most important people in his life. I play pro movies. My life is quite different than a lot of regular um, tournament poker professionals. About to meet up with the wife and kids, grab some dinner. Oh my God, look at Cole sleeping. How cute is that? I have two kids, uh, both boys. Cole is two and a half months and Ryder is two and a half years. Good morning, Cole. Good morning, baby. Being a father is unbelievable. Being with my kids, it energizes me. It gets me like excited about going to try to accomplish something for them. Who's your favorite poker player? You are my favorite. I'm clearly not the favorite to win with this tough players left. This is a dude who's trying to make it so my son can't eat. If I could close it out and win the million dollars, it would be like a completely life-changing event. Hopefully it's my time to shine. Who's winning all the monies today? If I got to bring home that money and see like my wife and kid, he won't understand, but one day when he does understand, he'll be like just really proud of his dad. Well, Brandon played in the Prime qualifier for just 1500 bucks, trying to parlay that into a million, make his wife and kids proud, and surprise the poker world in the process. Back at the feature table, three players nobody would be surprised if they won. Kachalov, Seidel, and Mercier. Well, taking a look at the VPIP, or percentage of hands voluntarily played, the big three is about even, but that's where it ends. Pre-flop aggression index and post-flop aggression index, Jason Mercier is all over these other guys. Seidel and Kachalov looking a little passive by the numbers there. For more in-depth statistics, log on to EpicPoker.com. Action continues as Kachalov looks down at King 5 and folds. Gavin Smith and Adam Levy don't want to participate either. Seidel from the small blind just calls. Little surprised to see that from Eric with 7-3 offsuit. Either raise and try to steal it or just get away, especially against a player as aggressive as Jason Mercier. Check it up. And Jason checks his 8-6 suited, lets Seidel off the hook. Probably could have taken it with a raise. Flop is 10-jack-6, pair of sixes for Mercier. Complete air ball for Seidel, but you wouldn't know it based on the bet. You gotta try to take this pot right here. Mercier makes the call after Seidel bet 13,000. Turn card now, queen of clubs, Mercier still leads. Gonna take some guts to fire a second barrel if you're Eric Seidel, and he's certainly not short on that. Fires 30,000. And with three overcards to his sixes, it becomes that much more difficult for Jason Mercier to stick around. And Mercier folds. Doesn't really have much choice. He could try to raise and take it right there, but it's such a scary board with the 10 jack queen. Better to just wave the white flag. First we saw Mercier flex his muscles, now it's Seidel's turn. What a treat to see two of the best fighting out for a seat at the final table. Experience epic poker. Now you can play like a pro, free. The battle on the hardwood continues with so much on the line. A seat at the final table, a chance at a million dollars, and the first ever epic poker champions ring. And all three seem to be slipping away from Gavin Smith right now. He is all in and way behind Adam Levy. Smith came over the top of a Kachalov pre-flop raise. Levy woke up with Queens and Snap called him. 
I'm gonna need to catch a lot. <laughs> Little does Gavin know it, but Eugene mucked an ace pre-flop, which means Smith only has two outs. <laughs> and here comes the term. There it is. It's an ace. Gavin Smith takes the lead. Easy game. All he's got to do is dodge a queen to stay alive. River is a four. Gavin Smith doubles up, and Adam Levy loses again. Adam's bad luck continues. Kachilov took two fives and ran him through his kings earlier, and now Smith with ace-jack snapping off his queens. You're in great today. At least Levy's smiling about the beat. Doesn't have much choice. Sometimes you just gotta grin and bear it. Over at table two, the chip leader, Chino Reem, has put out a raise to 26,000 with pocket nine. Action is on start of day chip leader, Sam Trickett, who has fallen on hard times. All in, sir? Yeah. Okay, I have an all in bet with a raise. Do you see my hand or something? No, no, no. Are you, you serious, sir? <laughs> <laughs> I actually thought you said calling. Oh, that's that's okay. That's why I <laughs> <laughs> Sam's probably not going to be laughing that heartily if Chino calls. Call. Oh, okay, I have an all-in bet with a call now. And Chino does call, and Sam Trickett is at risk and way behind. Been a rough outing for Sam. Flop is Jack Ace Ace. Why did I call all the way with Jack Three? Turn card queen. That gives Trickett some hope. A jack or a queen, and these two players will split the pot. A seven, and Trickett will double up. Anything else, and he's done. River's a three, and Trickett is gone. That is certainly not the way that Sam scripted things at the outset of the day. He was the chip leader and quickly fell off the pace. I'm feeling good right now. Well, life is good for the chip leader. Life is also good for a big three, still going for the title, and number one ranking in the world on the epic update. You see Seidel nearing 730,000. Mercier, seven and a quarter, while Eugene Kachaloff hanging in there with 411,000. Action on Jason Mercier. He's got ace queen off suit. Min raises to 16,000. No need to raise more than the minimum if that's what's working for you. Think of chips as soldiers. You don't want to send any more to the battlefront than you need to to get the job done. Seidel with ace, eight of spades, makes the call from the big blind. He's in bad shape heading to the flop. Flop eight, five, three, top pair for Seidel. Did I say bad shape? I meant great shape. He's a huge favorite now after having spiked an eight. Seidel checks. Mercier bets 14,000. 14, Simple continuation bet on a very dry board. Seidel makes the call. Jason's not going to be too pleased with that. Turn card, queen of spades, Mercier with top pair and Seidel with a flush draw. Did I say not too pleased with that? Jason just hit his gin card, but of course it has given Seidel the nut flush draw. He checks. 70,000 in the pot. Look for Jason to bet somewhere around 35. Well, he bets 33. Now, some players would be tempted to put in a raise here with the nut flush draw and the eights to maybe get a player who's trying to value bet nines, tens, or jacks off of their hand at this point. Seidel calls. Not Eric, though. He's going to maintain his discipline. To the river, it's a seven of hearts. Mercier with a check mark. Action to Seidel. Seidel checks back to Mercier. Value bet time for Jason. Andy bets 83,000, more than half the pot. Well, Seidel knows Jason's capable of a three-barrel bluff. Makes it hard to lay down second pair on that board. And Seidel lays it down. And that's why he's one of the best. I can't stand you, young punks. I gotta tell you, my chips would have been in the pot. Mercier and the young gun gets the best of the veteran side down. The battle for the number one ranking in the GPI and the spot at the final table continues between the three players. Well, an elite collection of many of the game's greatest players made up Epic's inaugural field. And it's been an action-packed session so far. 
as we are down to the final 10. Gino Reeve yeah, remains the chip leader. I'm feeling good. As start of the day leader, Sam Triggett heads home. We game, everyone. Busted in 11th place. Um, pretty disappointed as I went into today as chip leader. I just didn't really get any luck today or uh, any nice spots. And we began this inaugural Epic Poker League event with 18 players and, well, two big questions. Who will make it to the final table and who will take their place atop the Global Poker Index Leaderboard, GPI? Both questions have yet to be answered, Ali, but I know you must be enjoying this game within a game between Eric Seidel, Jason Mercier, and Eugene Katsalov. Yeah, number two, three, and four in the world. With the absence of Bertrand Grosspellier, the Frenchman who didn't make his way into this particular event and who holds the current number one rating, these three are battling for that number one slot. And it's brought a new dimension, not just to this particular event, but to the game of poker in general. I like it, and they like that new dimension as well. So the battle on the hardwood continues. From the Palms Casino Resort in Las Vegas, for Ali Najad, I'm Pat O'Brien. We will see you next time as the Epic Poker League rolls on.